the Institute of Industrial Automation and Software Engineering looks back on nearly 80 years of tradition at the University of Stuttgart. We see ourselves as a think tank, bridge builder and integration hub. The focus of the Institute's research work lies in automation technology, software development, the reliability and learning capabilities of automated systems, as well as web and app technologies and automation technology. IAS works together on projects with well-known research institutes and also with industrial companies such as Siemens, Bosch and Daimler. We offer our students a well-grounded, scientific and practically oriented education that prepares them for an international career in industry or science. For prospective students from abroad, we offer a master's program in information technology, Infotech in English. The Infotech master's program provides the unique blend of computer science and electronics or information engineering courses within one program. Additionally, non-technical courses ensure that students obtain an interdisciplinary education, training of fundamental methods and scientific skills for research and development. Our motto at IAS – practice what is taught, teach based on research and apply research results. Hello everybody and very welcome to the lecture Industrial Automation Systems. This is one of two lectures which will give you an idea about automation technology. In this lecture I'm going to present to you applications of automation technology, the basic structures and topologies of automated systems, discuss a little bit the research trends, present to you a case study and introduce you to our weekly task. Applications of automation technology are very broad. In fact, we have multiple disciplines dis deploying automation technology. For instance, in automotive, aerospace or medical applications, we have lots of automated system helping humans in doing their job. Especially in industrial manufacturing and production, we have a lot of automation technology in our factories in Germany. For instance, you see here a picture of a machinery system which is deployed to assemble goods. Or, for instance, here's another picture of a automotive production where you can see some body frames of cars and welding robots welding them together. There are also chemical plants producing chemical goods which need to be automated. Also three application areas are good examples for so-called one-of-a-kind systems in automation of manufacturing or chemical production. But how does a automated system actually look like from a more theoretic viewpoint? Indeed, each automated system consists of a process which is somehow in a technical system. This technical system is automated using a automation system and we have a feedback loop where the sensor signals from the technical process are actually fed back to the automation system. And this automation system gives a control signal back to the technical system in order to steer the process and set certain 
actuators, for instance, valves, which will then control the system. We always have a human operator in the loop as well. So the overall system might be automated, the human is required to take charge of the overall supervisory control. In automation technology and our lectures, we discuss intensively on how we can compose such overall systems for operation in real time. In practice, certainly a plant or a chemical facility is far more complex than just this little box which I have shown you before. In fact, the topology of automated systems which we are using in factory looks more like this. We have a set of subsystems which are actually forming our technical system on field level. For instance, just imagine a huge automotive plant which has numerous lines and machinery, machinery systems all together. So systems are based in the so-called field level. This field level is controlled from a control level using PLC systems. A PLC is a state-of-the-art, a programmable logic controller doing all the logic controls and certain control loops in the subsystems. However, this is not enough. Those PLCs are themselves being connected using a plant bus and would be connected to a master computer, for instance, or certain other PC systems which are utilized to do some monitoring, some protocoling of operations and so forth. Those systems on the master computer level are called supervisory control systems because they steer and direct all these lower control systems which control the subsystems. In addition to these three levels, there are actually two more levels which are connected using a factory bus. We would certainly need information on the enterprise itself, for instance, to inform the manager of the plant of what is going on, or the management of the overall company, which might be globally distributed as well. So certainly you will ask what are actually the research topics which we have in automation technology. You could argue that as per today there are lots of automated factories in automotive, aerospace, consumer goods production and so forth. So why do we actually need to research on new topics and what are the trends of those research? As I just explained, as per today, we have a rather hierarchical approach. This is indicated by this pyramid with the field level, control, supervisory control level and the enterprise level. However, there's lots of technical innovation today. We have microcontrollers becoming smaller and cheaper every day, having more advanced communication facilities. So in fact, there is a so-called Internet of Things and Services which is changing, potentially changing, the topologies from a clear hierarchical structure towards a coupled network in industrial automation. So what you see here is the potential future topology. We don't have clear hierarchies anymore. We have distributed control systems distributed in terms of little objects which have communication facilities and a lot of computing power to take charge of individual tasks. So we can expect actually a lot more of objects 
than we would have PLC controllers as per today. In addition to this, those objects, intelligent objects, will create loads of data. And those data can be utilized to come up with new services using all those networked information and helping the users to actually steer and control their factories. So as hierarchies become blurred, there might be quite a change in the architectures of automation systems. But another question would be, why do we actually need such smart factories using these new type of Internet of Things and Services approaches to be automated? So today in automation technology, we have achieved a lot and there are plenty of different showcases where we can illustrate how well automation technology is working. However, factories of the future need to be more efficient in manufacturing and especially more flexible in producing new goods and products with a short lead time. So those are requirements which is challenging our automation approaches because today we do need a lot of engineering time to actually come up with new automation facilities. It's not particularly cheap to build an automated factory because we need a lot of engineering power, people, to create such a system. So in future, with the help of the new technologies which we are researching on, we try to be more reconfigurable in terms of what we call plug and produce. The idea is to plug in a new automated system and it will configure itself automatically. Certainly, once these systems are running, we also have challenges in operating the systems. As per today, it's still a little difficult and you need a lot of training courses to actually be able to program such machinery. In future, we hope to have an easier operation. And lastly, and the third field of our research and automation is on maintenance. We need certainly very reliable systems, but if ever they break, we need to fix them quite quickly and have easy maintenance. So in Germany, the professors of our automation technology, which are actually part of our organization, which is called TU Laut, have agreed upon a open source resource research environment, which we are utilizing all over Germany as a case study. So we German professors or some of the German automation technology professors have actually committed to this scenario. So Birgit Vogelhäuser, which you will see in the next presentation, will also discuss certain aspects of automation technology and she will be utilizing, like me, this scenario. So what would be typical projects on which we are researching. Just to give you some examples, we are doing apps for human-machine communication, we are thinking about how to schedule processes automatically, we discuss what we call service-oriented control, which is a new way to control architectures, and we do a lot of planning and modeling research to set up our systems more efficiently. So, the professors have actually various systems in their laboratory. You see here some uh, pictures from my lab in Stuttgart. You see some other facilities in Munich. You see other facilities from my colleagues in Magdeburg, Hamburg or Aachen. So certainly we also like to bring all our theoretic concepts to 
application. And especially with our students over here, we do a lot of design and implementation of distributed automation system, be it smartphone apps or scheduling software or control units, which we are utilizing in our model processes, where we are using microcontrollers for different systems, where we are doing the app programming and so forth. Certainly you would be wondering how students would interact with us in our research activities. And I can give you two examples. For instance, we have a student's project, which is a six months teamwork in our courses where eight students would be cooperating to solve one software task. We certainly have thesis work in the bachelor and master programs where you would be dedicated to a certain topic. How would such a topic look like? Usually software development in automation field, but also other tasks where you are responsible of the quality assurance and configuration management, or if you are part of a bigger group, you could be the manager and do the project management of such a group. Here you see some of our students where they were discussing, working, or like in this picture, receiving a prize in their final presentation. Let me now briefly explain to you the task of the week. We have created a interactive online simulation game to give you a little bit of the flavor on how it is to actually engineer a automated software system, a automated manufacturing plant. So what we have is a web application in which you can take over the role of a German engineer designing a smart automation system. So for instance, you have here a project description and subsequently in this game, you will be asked certain questions to steer the project, to take strategic decisions on the automation technology, and you will be evaluated upon your answers in terms of points, but also project duration, project costs, quality levels which you are achieving, or numbers of workers which you have successfully deployed. So have a look under this link and log on be part of the game and try to have a good score and manage this project successfully. Thank you very much for your interest and I would be glad to see you one day over here in Germany.